Hello dear friends, I am Avadhesh Pratap Patel and I welcome to all of you in another video on the history of Chhattisgarh. Today in this video, we are going to talk about Pandu dynasty. Well, without any further delay, let's start the video. As far as Pandu dynasty is concerned, it is considered one of the most important and most powerful dynasties after the decline of Sharapura dynasty in ancient Chhattisgarh. As far as the name Pandu is concerned, this dynasty was known by two names, one the Pandu dynasty, another the Soma dynasty. Well, what is the reason behind this nomenclature? Well, the rulers of this dynasty considered themselves as the descendants of the Pandavas. So that's why they were known by Pandu dynasty. And because they started their rule from the region of Amarkantak, from the region of Mekla, which was known as Soma region in ancient period. That's why they are also known by the name of Soma dynasty. So these are the two reasons behind these two names. According to the historians, Pandu dynasty or the Soma dynasty had two branches. One branch ruled in Chhattisgarh, another branch ruled in Odisha. To avoid the confusion, the historians have given them two distinct names. The branch which was ruling in Chhattisgarh was called Pandu dynasty and another branch which was ruling in Odisha was called Soma dynasty. So this is the first information, first information regarding with the Pandu dynasty. So have a screenshot of this page. Now let's move on to the next page. Okay. As far as uh, Pandu dynasty is concerned, their kings adopted the title of Kosadipati and they were the first to do so. Well, why? Because when they started ruling from the Mekla region, they called the adjoining areas of Mekla region, especially the eastern part as Kosla. And because they were ruling over those territories, they called themselves as Kosladipati. The title of Kosladipati was adopted by the kings of Pandu dynasty and it was done for the first time in ancient Chhattisgarh. And they issued the most number of copper plates from a place known as Sirpur, which is today located in Mahasamun district. Because of this reason, scholars believe that Sirpur must have been their capital later on. So, if you want to know that where Mekla region exists. So, this area is called Mekla region. Mekal hills are located here. So, from this place, the rulers of Pandu dynasty started ruling. So, that's all about the general introduction of the Pandu dynasty. Have a screenshot of this page as well. Now, let's move on to the next page. Well, as far as copper plates are concerned, we have seen one crucial information that all the copper plates or most of them have been issued from Sirpur. There is another crucial information. They have used two scripts in these copper plates. These scripts are the box headed script and the cuneiform script. So the rulers of Pandu dynasty used two types of scripts in their copper plates. The first type was called box headed script, the second type was called cuneiform script. Now let's talk about the important rulers of Pandu dynasty. Let's start with Udyan. According to Kalinger inscription, Udyan was the first known person of the Pandu dynasty. Kalinger inscription says that the first, the name of the first known person from the Pandu dynasty was Udyan. So he can be called as a man of origin for Pandu dynasty. And he is also believed to be the father of the legendary Pandu king Indrabal, who actually founded the Pandu dynasty. This Indrabal was the same person who was under the service of Sudev Raj. And later on, he is credited of killing of Pravar Raj, by which he later on established this Pandu dynasty. 
so we will know more about interval in the next page so let's have a screenshot of this page as well now let's move to interval he is the most important ruler of this dynasty according to dhamtari and kamwatal inscriptions under sudevraj indrabal was working as sarvadhikar adhikarta now this title sarvadhikar adhikarta today or later on it was equivalent to the post of chief, chief minister so it was a very influential post so indrabal was working or appointed as sarvadhikar adhikarta under sudevraj sharap kulya king sudevraj he was a very influential and powerful personality and sarvadhikar adhikarta means chief minister now next if you talk about indrabal more you will have to know that indrabal had family relations with sharappuri dynasty as he was married to princess lok prakasha of sharappuri dynasty and sharappuri dynasty was also known by amrarya kula so sharappuri dynasty was also known by the name of amrarya kula and indrabal had family relations with this dynasty as he had married the princess lok prakasha of the very same dynasty so indrabal was not only a very influential person working as sarvadhikar adhikarta he was also a relative of sharappuri kings so he was indeed a very powerful personality now in sharappuri dynasty after the death of sudevraj there was a war of succession between surabal and prabharaj indrabal sided with surabal and killed prabharaj and when the central authority of sharappuri dynasty weakened he established his own kingdom known as the pandu dynasty he also established or founded a town by the name indrapur which is today known as kharod and his son ishan dev the son of indrabal ishan dev he he built a temple over there which is today known as lakshmaneshwar temple now there's a story why this temple is known as lakshmaneshwar temple well it is not the temple of lakshman so why it is known as lakshmaneshwar temple actually there was a tradition of offering 1 lakh grains of rice in this temple so earlier it was known as lakneshwar temple and slowly it got changed into lakshmaneshwar temple so in this video that's all about pandu dynasty we will continue more in the next video so let's have a screenshot of this page as also so thank you for watching we'll see you in the next video